Addis Ababa, the capital of Ethiopia. The city was established in 1886 by Emperor Minalik II. Today, this bustling place is home to 3.5 million people. The city is often referred to as the political capital of Africa, with the African Union having its headquarters here. In the latest in our series of reports from Ethiopia, we turn our attention to the sport of basketball. The Kirkos district of the capital is home to the Addis Afros Basketball Club, one of the leading teams in the country. 27-year-old Solomon Gamechu is captain of the men's team. Addis Afros was founded in 2008 by a group of two Germans and four Ethiopians. When it was founded, its aim was to expand the game of basketball throughout Ethiopia and to create opportunities for kids and young people to get into the sport. That was its main mission. But to put it bluntly, it's fair to say that the sport is still struggling for popularity here. There have been attempts to grow the game, but basketball remains relatively unknown in Ethiopia at the moment. A lot of work still needs to be done if basketball is to grow and develop in this country. If the aim of the team was to raise the popularity of the sport in the city, it's actually ended up serving a more meaningful purpose. One of the Afros players is six foot eight inch forward Ruach Peter, who's originally from Juba in South Sudan. He had to leave his home country due to the political tensions there. Having spent time in refugee camps in Kenya and Uganda, he and his father finally decided that he should relocate to Ethiopia. So the idea came from Minister of Education in South Sudan, like. Each and everyone who completed high school on that year has to go for a training, for a military training. After two years, then you have to come and join university. So from there, my, I, can, I told the history to my dad, then my dad started telling me that it's hard to join Hamu at this time. So you can't join Hamu. So what you do is, we, we may find a way for you to go back to school. We are men in the family. We are almost 13 boys from our father. So they find it hard to educate all these boys, so they start dropping out. So I was the only one who was, who was in high school until I completed. Then he told me that I have to take you to Ethiopia. Then I say fine. That's when I started coming here. Despite Ruach being able to find refuge in Ethiopia, the 24-year-old still has family who've not managed to escape the conflict in his homeland. I had families who are still in South Sudan, like I had some of my brothers. Some killed, some are still alive, like one of my brothers was here in Addis. He wanted to join the school, but it, he found it hard to get his school fees. Then he started getting back to the South Sudan. So he's now in front line fighting. I don't know, I have spent like nine months, with never, we never communicate, I don't know where he is. I don't know whether he's alive or dead, I don't know. The bond between Ruach and Solomon is particularly strong, and the Addis Afros team provides financial support to help Ruach remain in the city and pursue his education at a local university. Ruach first came to us with his friend, who was playing for a different team at the time. To be honest, we didn't expect Ruach to be such a success with us. It's astonishing the way in which he has overcome so many difficult obstacles in his life to get to where he is now. He's had it tough, and some of the sad things he's told us have affected us too. But he's very strong. He has inspired the whole team and made it better. I think he's here to stay, and he's really committed to the team, as the rest of us all are. He's only been in the squad for three years, but his feeling for Addis Afros is like those of us who have been here right from the beginning. 
He's a strong man. He's someone who we love, admire and respect. Ethiopia became a member of FIBA, basketball's governing body, in 1949. Despite this, the country has made hardly any impact on the world stage. The national team's participation in the 1962 African Championship remains their only appearance at an international tournament. The lack of development in the sport from the top down has meant that the women's game has also struggled to progress. Although the Addis Afro's women's team train three times a week, they've often struggled to make up the numbers. Tilsit Yedbarek is their captain. I don't think there are enough games for girls to create more competition among themselves because we have only four teams registered now and it seems like it's only one time you play with them. Last year they say like they would have two rounds but that didn't happen. We even were trying to tell them like, and we can contribute if it is about paying the refs or any costs that involve it because we want to play in it. So we don't have enough opportunities to play on uh, games regularly like the guys do. I don't believe attracting young players is that difficult. The problem is that as they grow, they need to earn money, like everybody else. They need to do something that offers a future. The problem is that the environment around basketball here in Ethiopia is not something that makes you entirely happy. The relationship between the federation and the teams needs to improve. There are many players who have the ability to play, but who don't know about any of the local clubs. There are many who leave despite having interest in the game, so it's difficult to retain good players. The Ethiopian Men's Basketball League is comprised of 11 sides. Every team plays each other twice, home and away. However, when Transworld Sport was in town due to the unseasonably bad weather, the Addis Afros were forced to postpone their outdoor home league match against Addis Ababa University and instead schedule an indoor friendly against local rivals, the Tasty Ballers. The Afros in green got off to a good start with Ruach and Solomon displaying the skills that have made them the cornerstone of the team. However, the team's defensive frailty soon became apparent and their opponents went on to establish a commanding lead. Ruach Peter showed his frustration with his team's efforts by getting into foul trouble and becoming involved in an altercation with the referee. Late on in the encounter, the Afros did find some rhythm and Solomon weighed in with 27 points. But on this occasion, the game finished in a 62-48 victory for the Tasty Ballers. The Addis Afros Club has plans to build its own new gymnasium, and we have to train and develop young players. Only by owning our own gym and cultivating young players will we see any real progress for the club. This is my vision, and I truly believe that it can happen. The struggle continues for the Addis Afros to obtain the funding they need to help develop the game. But the spirit certainly remains strong among these young men and women.